Matthew chapter 21 and verse 12. Matthew 21 and verse 12. It talks about the temple of God that was cleansed by Jesus. Verses 12 all the way down. And behind me you will see an image right now of how the temple looked during the times of Jesus. Temple set on the mountain of Zion which covered about 30 acres of land. Temple building made really had two big parts. One of them was the Holy of Holies. Then there was the holy place and then there was the court of Israelites. Then there was the court of women and then there was the one more court. It was called the court of Gentiles. After a while this temple, the temple that Herod built had the court of Gentiles. The reason why they had the court of Gentiles was because the temple of God was supposed to be a temple of prayer for all nations. Even in that time it was welcoming all nations. At this Gentiles court, priests what they would do is they would start setting up booths, bazaar and like a flea market where people can buy lambs, buy doves, exchange money and they pretty much turn it into a merchandise place. They would lease different parcels on this temple territory that Gentiles had access to and literally they created a commotion there. The Lord Jesus Christ comes into that part of the temple, not to the Holy of Holies, not to the Holy Place, not to the court of Israelites or court of women, he comes into the court of the Gentiles, the furthest part of the temple. The temple that has people that are marginalized. Temple that has only people that are honestly kind of cast away, but they still have access to the temple. And he begins to turn away the tables. He begins to drive away the merchants and he begins to cleanse the temple. This is exactly what deliverance is. Jesus cleaning his temple. The moment he did that, religious leaders got extremely disturbed. If you take your notes, write this down. Deliverance always brings disturption. It disturbs people. Why? Because some of us, we would rather demonize those who do deliverance than deliver those who are demonized. Because it's way easier to criticize than to create. It's way easier to attack people instead of drive out demons. It always happens. It happened with Jesus and it happens today. And my goal is not to throw stones at people who throw stones at us. But I just want to let you know, the moment, those of you watching us on live stream, the moment you begin to pursue deliverance, some people are, will not be happy. They're happy with you being demonized. But they will be unhappy when you will be free or when you will try to become desperate to be free. Why? Because most of our generation, the problem is this, is we normalize what God wants to neutralize. Nightmares, paralysis, intrusive thoughts, when people have extreme phobias, sicknesses that doctors cannot diagnose or they have these strong urges to blasphemy God. They get sleepy during spiritual things but they can watch Netflix non-stop for 10 hours straight. These people, they get normalized. People look at us, people look at your situation and they say, well that's okay, that's normal. But Jesus comes into the temple and he looks at the merchants and he says, that's not normal. That needs to be neutralized. We need to defund demonic. We need to cancel curses. We need to drive out demons. We need to set the captives free. It's time to deliver the demonized instead of demonize those who are doing deliverance. Somebody give God some praise right now. And Jesus cleansed the temple. Jesus never cleansed tombs. That's what religious people do. They were whitewashed tombs. Jesus raised the dead in the tombs. But he cleansed his temples. I want to tell you something. Jesus does not come to cleanse tombs. Tombs don't need cleansing. They need resurrection. The dead, spiritually dead people, they don't need decoration. They don't need reformation. They don't need behavior modification. They need spiritual resurrection. And so when you become a Christian, Jesus 
he comes into your life and he begins to cleanse temples till this day Jesus cleanses temples I want to address those of you who right now who are still not gonna hear what I'm about to say who are maybe like man why are you casting out of demons out of Christian people that's the question I have why did Jesus drive things out of the temple because temples get trashed why do you do spring cleaning in your backyard why do you take garbage out of your house because things can get messy as long as there is humanity in us my friend even the temple of God can get trashed but thank God for Jesus who removes that trash thank God for Jesus who removes demons thank God for Jesus who heals the sick thank God for Jesus who drives out demons Thank God for Jesus who is not ashamed of our pain, who is not ashamed of our problems, He is not ashamed of our torment, He is not ashamed of our disease, He is not ashamed of where we've been, who we slept, what we smoked, where we hang out and He comes into our area, He comes into the court of Gentiles, He comes into those who are marginalized, for those who are on the hinges, for those who are sitting on the fence, for those who don't feel qualified to go to the the Holy of Holies for those who don't feel deserving to go to the holy place he comes and he says I came to deliver you I came to heal you I came to set you free I came for you zeal burns in me for your house zeal burns in me for my house you are my house you are my temple you are my place I purchased you with my blood I own you every demon has to go I serve sentence to those demons right now I serve a notice to every demon you have to go come on somebody why does God set his church free why did Jesus cleanse the temple you must understand he called it his temple somebody say I'm his somebody say I am owned I'm not talking about like your jealous ex-boyfriend who tried to possess you, control you and abuse you. When Jesus owns you, He purchased you with His blood. He paid to have you. He owns you in a loving way, in a tender way. And the Bible says in John chapter 2 that when Jesus started cleansing the temple, disciples remember your zeal for your house consumes me. I felt the Holy Spirit tell me today in the hotel as I was preparing He said Lord the demons are consuming my people but I am consumed to have my people back to me I am burning with zeal for their freedom I am burning with zeal that every area of their life belongs only to me that not one part of their life belongs to the devil not one part of their day belongs to nightmares not one part of their life belongs to sexual demons that torment you asleep that not part not one part of their body belongs to arthritis asthma or TB that everything even the court of Gentiles belongs to God are you with me temples can be trashed if you are tormented by demons it does not mean you're not a temple of God just because the court of Gentiles was trashed it does not mean that it stopped being a temple Jesus never said it's no longer a temple I want to rebuke kindly pastors who tell their people that just because you're tormented you, you don't have salvation that just because you're suffering you don't have Holy Spirit just because something is harassing you somehow you don't have enough faith my friend you can be a holy temple of God and who got trash and Jesus is not ashamed of you and Jesus did not come to trash you and uh, condemn you Jesus came to cleanse you he came to purify you he came to set you free he came to burn anything that's not of his he came to bring his holiness into your life and to remind you that temples can and need to be cleansed you can be a temple and be in need of cleansing you can be holy person and be in need of cleansing the cleansing of deliverance the cleansing of healing and the cleansing of breaking of strongholds. Are you with me? The merchants that operated in the temple, they did not own the temple. They simply operated. The real estate they operated in 
was owned by someone else. Every demon that's operating on the territory of your soul. I want to serve that notice to that demon right now. You're illegal. I want to serve a notice to every demon tormenting your life. And I want to let that demon know you don't own where you operate. There is an owner. The Bible says you are chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own people. You're owned by the blood. You're owned by Jesus. Even if families sacrifice you to demons, even if blood was involved, even if ancestors sacrifice you, you are owned by Jesus. Demons may operate in that place, but they don't own your real estate. Your real estate is owned by the blood. Jesus holds a title deed to your soul, to your body and to your spirit. And if I would be you, I would take a five second and give him some praise right now. That you are the property of Jesus. You are the property of the Holy Ghost. Your body belongs to Jesus. Somebody give God some praise. Albakora babakolo bobo sandaya. Jesus comes to the temple and he's noticing that whatever the people have made it into normal needs to be neutralized. Maybe you have normalized nightmares. Jesus wants to neutralize nightmares. Maybe you've normalized intrusive thoughts. Jesus came to neutralize intrusive thoughts. Maybe you normalize today that everybody dies in your family at the age of 50 from cancer. Jesus came to, comes to your temple today and says, I came to neutralize what you normalize. I came to deliver you from demons. Don't domesticate demons. Don't domesticate darkness. Don't make it part of your DNA. Don't make it part of your makeup and says, well, this is just me. I am insecure. This is just me. I am an overweight person. This is just me. I'm just a person that's scared. Do not domesticate that which you were anointed to be delivered from. Come on, somebody. Stop coping with that with which you were anointed to conquer. You cannot be free as long as you make that demon your domesticated pet. As long as you learn to cope with it. As long as you learn to live with it. As long as you learn to manage it. As long as you learn to simply live with it. Jesus came today. They lived for hundreds, for years. All of the merchants in the temple. It was normal. Church calls things normal today that Jesus came to neutralize. Don't call normal what God comes to neutralize. Don't domesticate what Jesus came to deliver from. We belong to God. In the conclusion, I want to practically instruct you toward deliverance. Five things about deliverance that happen in the temple. Number one, during cleansing of the temple, Jesus drove out merchants. That speaks of deliverance from demons. Jesus wants to deliver, cast demons out. Why? Merchants did not belong in the temple. They belonged in the marketplace. Demons do not belong in Christians. They belong in spiritually dead people. The Bible clearly states, we are the children of God and the world lies under the sway of the wicked one. That means everyone who is not a child of God is already under the influence of demons. They might not be demon possessed, but they are demon influenced. The scripture clearly states that we used to be dead in trespasses and the spirit of this world was operating in us. Demons live in spiritually dead people. But they can operate in the temple. And that's why Jesus comes to dispossess them. Because they don't belong in the temple. Spirit of fear doesn't belong in you. Spirit of immorality does not belong in you. Spirit of perversion does not belong in you. Spirit of pornography does not belong in you. A curiosity with witchcraft does not belong in you. It belongs in a marketplace. You're not a marketplace. You are a temple of the Holy Ghost. You were bought with the price. You deserve to be free. Jesus Christ bought you with the price. You must be free in Jesus' mighty name. That's number one is that Jesus drove out merchants from the temple. He never drove out merchants from the marketplace because that's where they belong. Demons don't belong in you. Can Christians have a demons? Yes, but they shouldn't. And Jesus Christ wants to set you free. Number two, I want you to notice not only Jesus over cast out merchants, Jesus overthrew the tables. 
Overthrowing the table speaks of breaking mental strongholds. Deliverance does not end when demons leave. Deliverance continues when whatever tables demons set up while dwelling in your life, God wants to overthrow. Bible calls it strongholds. Dominant thoughts, mindsets, attitudes, expectations. Jesus does not just deliver us from demons. He wants to break down demonic tables of operation. Demons are cast out. Strongholds are cast down. Say this with me. Say demons are cast out. Strongholds are cast down. He wants to overthrow the table of fear. He wants to overthrow the table of constantly expecting something bad happen to you. That's why some people manifest all the time. You know, you will see they're delivered and you're like, why are they manifesting? Because deliverance doesn't end with demon leaving. Jesus also wants to kick every table and turn it from its place. So that when you are in the service like that, you no longer associate deliverance with you manifesting. So when you are in the prayer line, so that even the, some of, even the way your body reacts, no longer reacts, you need to renew your mind. You need to break down strongholds. You need to capture those lies, the dominant thoughts and expectations. God wants to turn over every table and every chair of mental strongholds in your life. The moment you get set free, you need to begin to fill your life with God's Word. Why? Because deliverance did not end, it only started. And deliverance continues with breaking mental strongholds. Number three, I want you to notice the moment Jesus drove out the merchants, He overturned the tables. That's casting out of demons. Secondly is breaking down the strongholds. Number three is the Bible says the blind and the lame came to Him and He healed them. Deliverance paves the way to emotional healing. Most of emotional healing or we call it inner healing that's done today does not start with deliverance and that's where it's not right. Jesus first drove things out then He healed. Deliverance doesn't always heal but it paves the way to healing. If you were abused, if you were taken advantage, if you grew up without a father and mother, if you were thrown from one foster child for foster parent to another one, if you were cheated on, abandoned, rejected, left alone, perhaps locked in the basement at a very tender young age and told that there are snakes there and they'll bite you because you did something not really good to your parents and you were scared to death. Deliverance will drive the spirit of fear but you will still will need to be healed of those emotional memories. And what I love God for is He doesn't just deliver us. He helps to break down strongholds and then He helps to heal our emotions. That we can love again. That we can dream again. That we don't smell like where we came from. We don't talk like where we came from. We don't live like where we came from. But we represent where we go. We represent who we belong to. God wants to heal emotional wounds. God wants to heal emotional bruises. Some of you, you keep manifesting and you keep getting delivered. It's because you keep chasing a deliverance. But you've been abused and you need to see a counselor. You need to find a local church. You need to have a mentor in your life who can help to heal the bruises and turn your wounds into scars so God can take your scars and turn them into stars. So God can take your scars and turn them into your testimony. Amen. Jesus doesn't just cast out demons, break strongholds. He also heals our emotions. Healing of the emotions happen when you forgive. Healing of the emotions happen when you open up to somebody. Healing of the emotions happen when you stop pretending that it doesn't matter and it doesn't hurt. What your uncle, your auntie or maybe somebody in high school or somebody when you were a child did to you. But you address these emotions and you process them with the help of the Holy Spirit and somebody who knows what they're doing and helping you to process them. Why is that important? In our experience, people who are abused, they will keep manifesting until the infection that the wound that wasn't treated properly is not dealt with properly. And the moment the wound is healed, they stop manifesting. Not because they stop manifesting, it's because the healing has happened and the soul is restored. Number four, is Jesus restored prayer, praise in the temple. 
The moment God delivers you from a demon, He wants to break your mental strongholds. He wants to heal your soul. And what He wants to do next is not so now you have free time to watch Netflix. He wants to set you free so now you can bring praise in your life and begin to fight back. Deliverance does not mean you will never have a war. Deliverance does not mean demons will not try to come back. Deliverance does not mean the demon will not attempt to regain possession. Deliverance means now your hands are untied and you have a fighting chance. Deliverance means now you must fill your mouth with praise. So when the devil does come back and say, I want to get you back, you say, devil, not today. I'm going to praise my God. I'm going to worship my God. I'm not going to whine, complain and describe my situation. I will worship God until the prison cells of my emotional instability will break. I will shout until the prison doors begin to break. I will praise until the Jericho wall begin to fall. I don't feel like praising but my feelings don't dictate my praise. And when you begin to praise like the children did in the temple, something happens. Not only demons are driven out, not only God is healing and restoring your mind, but now you become victorious, not just delivered. God never created you for deliverance. He created you for dominion but you cannot exercise dominion until you get delivered and when you get delivered God gives you praise in your mouth because praise is your weapon prayer is your weapon and the fifth thing the scripture says in John chapter 2 is Jesus went and taught daily in the temple what does that mean the Word of God so get Jesus wants to get demons out Jesus wants to break down strongholds Jesus wants to bring healing to your soul and your body. Jesus wants to fill your mouth with praise and fill your mouth with His Word. These last two things, they give you a fighting chance when you go home. I want you to see what the scripture says and, I'm, and we're going to start praying. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth. That's Psalm 149 verses 6 and 9. Let the high praises be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. To do what? I want you to see this. This is no longer getting delivered. This is now exercising dominion. See Jesus getting merchants out of the temple, overthrowing the tables, healing the blind and the lame. Children are praising Him. He says this is a house of prayer and He begins to teach in that temple. What the Lord wants to do is take you from the place where you were bound with chains to the place where now you reverse that on the enemy and you bind the enemy. You were tormented by demons and you get to the place where the praise is in your mouth, double-edged sword in your hand to torment the enemy. In here you needed deliverance but in here is when the devil screams and yells, please leave me alone, I will go but don't torture me. Praise and prayer and the Word of God in your mouth turns you from a victim to a victor. You don't go from a conference to a conference, you go from deliverance to dominion. You don't go from deliverance to deliverance, you go from deliverance to victory. Praise in their mouth and a double-edged sword in their hands to execute vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with feathers of iron to execute on them the written judgment. This honor have all his saints. Praise the Lord. You can go home after deliverance. Maybe deliverance happened 90%. Today it's going to be happening fast but God's going to move powerfully. Maybe you're going to leave, you're going to leave one way disappointed or you can leave another way saying, you know what, what I've received, I'm going to work with it. I'm going to deal with mental strongholds. I'm going to be honest with God about my emotional bruises. I'm going to fill my mouth not with complaining but with praise. I'm going to grab a double-edged sword and if that old wicked demon comes back within my vicinity, I might not know how to yield this soul properly but that's where the devil is in trouble because you always it's all the person who doesn't know how to use their gun they're the scariest person because they can shoot an accident 
and you are scariest person because some of you you don't know how to wield this word and the devil knows that but if you know the power of this word and that nightmare comes back listen you don't have to wield it properly and that's where the devil is scared because you can slice him on accident you can hit him on accident begin to lift up the word of God and begin to tell that devil get out of my room get out of my sleep get out of my mind get out of my emotions get out of my children double-edged sword against the enemy praise in your mouth this honor have all his saints you are a saint of God he has given you this honor you are the saint of God he has given you this honor to fight back to fight back to fight back to come against the enemy let him run from you let him look for an exit let him be defeated in Jesus mighty name are you with me are you with me somebody say I am a saint come on I did not hear you somebody say I am a saint see I have this honor it's my honor to fight back against everything that comes against me say you demon I'm not a professional and you should be scared there is power wonder working power in the blood in the word in the word in the name of Jesus Christ Amen.